Hello, welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, TSC and ERC members are sworn in by the head of state. Cabinet Roundup. And we update you on Mashamani activities. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. Here's our first report. Members of the Teaching Service Commission and the Ethnic Relations Commission were sworn in by President David Granger. The head of state noted that constitutional service commissions insulate citizens and institutions against influence and interference by the executive. Representing the TSC are Marcel Hudson, Barbara Patricia Thomas Holder, Deborah Thomas, Ahmad Shaw, Alan Monroe, and Avril Crawford. Members of the ERC are Norris Witter, Niaz Saban, John Smith, Rajkumari Singh, Ashton Simon, Diodat Prasad, Norman McLean, Roshan Khan, Ruth Howard, and Barrington Braffitt. The appointment of the Teaching Service Commission, President Granger, noted, will aid in boosting the education sector. The work of the Commission will contribute to ensuring a core of qualified, trained, and highly motivated teachers in our education system. It will ensure it will assure these teachers of fairness in their appointments and due process in the exercise of discipline. President Granger added that the Ethnics Relation Commission is vital to safeguarding unity in the country. The work of the Ethnic Relations Commission is essential to ensuring ethnic harmony and social cohesion in our republic. Members of the two commissions commended the administration for the implantation of the important bodies. I feel that the responsibility is so much for the Ethnic Relations Commission to work, to create, to try and to create true national cohesion and goodwill amongst the religions and amongst the various ethnicities of our country. I want to compliment His Excellency for, you know, for this bold move in having these um, these commissions um, formally enacted and up and running. And I look forward to working diligently to solve all the problems of the teachers. They're an important people. They, are, they, have, they have been playing an important part, and I'm quite sure they will continue to play an important part in building this nation, molding this nation. The responsibility of our teachers cannot be overemphasized. The chairman of the commission is Kumar Deer Sarami, and the other members are Rabindra Prasad and Rosemary Noble. Zanil Williams for Info Hub. Here now is the Cabinet Roundup from Stacey Carmichael. Guyana is expected to sign a Memorandum of Understanding with Haiti on the margins of the 29th Intercessional Meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, to be hosted in Port-au-Prince. President David Granger and Second Vice President and Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich are attending the meeting slated for February 26 to 27, 2018. Minister of State Joseph Harmon said the MOU will provide a framework for the development of a Guyana-Haiti Joint Commission. That will seek to enhance bilateral relations between our two countries in the areas of tourism, agriculture, water management, forestry and food security. A concept note on a frontline village policy presented by President David Granger was adopted at Tuesday's cabinet meeting. Minister Harmon explained the intent of the concept note. The concept note is aimed at greater inclusion of all communities on our national borders in the body politic of Guyana and the effective delivery of public service to those communities. The note highlighted the need to address such issues as 
citizenship, registration, economic security, and employment. Finally, in post-cabinet roundup, businessman Siri Prasad, general manager of Guy Gas located at Lot 9 Bel Air Gardens, has penned a letter of apology to President Granger, the government and Guyanese for the placement of the controversial advertisement urging investors to go invest elsewhere. Prasad claims that Go Invest failed to fairly represent him as a local investor. And its genesis arose out of my sheer frustration in dealing with that agency. It was never meant to dissuade any investor, local or foreign, from investing in Guyana, but rather to highlight shortcomings and encourage public discussion concerning improvements to that important investment agency. I apologize for the content of the advertisement and its corresponding effect, including any embarrassment it may have caused my country and the government. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. The Minister of Citizenship, Winston Felix, is granting temporary amnesty to illegal foreign national minors to regularize their status. Here is that report. We've given you a chance to come to the office in Georgetown with your passport and apply for your extension of stay. If you came to work and your initial visa was an employment visa, you could have that extended as well as your work permit. Foreign nationals, particularly Brazilians, raised concerns of legalizing their status with Minister Brooms on her previous visits to the landing. Whilst they do not require an entry visa, they do need landing and work permits. These permits are granted by the Ministry of Citizenship. The foreign nationals were warned by the minister that this application process has to be done in person. Foreign nationals who overstay their time in Guyana can be considered illegal and could be brought before the courts and deported. Don't allow anybody to take money from you to do it. They can't do it for you. You have to come and apply for your own registration, your visa. You have to come to do that. Anybody who take your money from you, bad business. Foreign nationals are being encouraged to visit the Ministry of Citizenship's office located at 146 Waterloo Street in Georgetown for further information. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. The Guyanese will soon directly benefit from an ISO-accredited forensic science laboratory as the CSSP is currently implementing measures that will bring it in line with the required standards. Letitia Isaacs has more. CSSP project manager Clement Henry told InfoHub the initiative is part of a larger program being implemented to deal with some issues affecting the police force's crime response capacity. So we're at a point working towards... Uh, procuring a consultant firm, consultancy firm, to do a full diagnostic of the barriers to police performance. We believe that this information will be useful in addressing these barriers and bottlenecks so that we can design the appropriate intervention to enhance police performance. According to Henry, the Ministry of Public Security is currently in the advanced stage of procurement of quality equipment to conduct DNA and gunshot residue testing. We can bring the lab up to um, ISO um, accreditation and to do so there are a number of issues we need to address. We need to address the security system in the lab, the electronic security system, and we have already um, contracted a, a consultant to do this type of activity and we also need to address the air quality within the forensic laboratory. The forensic lab is a government of Guyana initiative with the goal to provide quality laboratory services to support forensic and non-forensic investigations. For InfoHub, Leticia Isaacs. The Savannah Drive team will host its Marikabai Max Enduro 2018 team contest on February 24. The challenge consists of a 45-mile drive which starts on the Linden Highway and finish in the village of Marikabai in Region 5, Mahaika Barbies. At the safari's launch on Wednesday, it was explained that whilst the contest is geared towards fun and adventure for the bikers, it also aims to promote community tourism. Marikabai's village Tushao, Colin Adrian, thanked the Savannah Drive team for showing interest in visiting the community. 
He's optimistic that the event will boost efforts at promoting the community as a tourism destination. From the time I took office, I, I try like to attract tourism. I see it as a key area where every individual in the community can benefit. Adrian added that villagers have been working to prepare for participants' arrival and then encouraged persons to come out for the event. Ghana Tourism Officer Ronald Smith praised the initiative and the potential tourism benefits. The Ghana Tourism Authority has been very supportive of events like these, more so in diversifying Ghana's um, tourism experience. Since we have recognized there is a great desire, there is need for events as these. There um, are motorsports events, but there's not motorsports event that takes you in such a terrain. Coordinator Shane DeAndre explained that there will be a total of 10 teams participating, comprising 30 motorbikes. The Public Health Ministry will provide an ambulance, two doctors, and additional medical personnel to accompany participants. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. The 1763 Rebellion Commemorative Exhibition is being hosted at the National Archives. Here are the details. Archivist Nadia Gamal Carter explained that the tour aims to highlight one of the most important events in local history. Now, the reason why they choose Republic as that as the date of Republic was because around the same time, we had a very important slave history It was one of the first, most successful slave rebellions, which set the pattern for all the rebellions that followed. So we thought that even though we're in a match season, we want you to know the other reasons some of the students shared their views about the exhibition. Today, I've learned a lot of things. Because it was my first time here, it was very shocking because I thought it was some big place and you might see a lot of things, but this is very amazing. And the whip, I didn't expect to see that. I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting to see more um, like um, man-made stuff, but it's just books. And so far, it's, it's quite okay. Practically, I've been reading a lot on the coffee monument so far, so it's just like topping up my knowledge and giving me a more like advance of what to come in the future. For InfoHub, Leticia Isaacs. Last night, the judging of the individual pieces for the MASH float and costume parade was successfully held. Zanil joins us again. Guyanese on Thursday turned out at Durban Park to support the first leg of the Mashramani float and costume parade. The Mash Night event, as coined by the organizers, returned following a two-year hiatus. Dr. George Norton, Minister of Social Cohesion, explained that this first leg will allow for persons to get a greater understanding of the bands. There's no doubt that this activity here is here to stay. You know, um, it, it depicts the king and queen of the mash, um, they say, display, and um, it, it takes away from what would have happened in the ordinary parade. Here you see the king and queen demonstrating by themselves, and then you have the commentaries, which is so important, because many times you might see a certain, uh, let's say, color, a certain uh, design, and you really don't know what it signifies. In this situation, it is explained to the crowd, the, the crowd exactly what has happened. Director of Culture, Tamika Botswain, says this event proves that Guyanese are interested in their culture. She is hopeful that more activities can be held throughout the year. This is the beginning of a new approach to culture. And we'd certainly like to um, give the Calypsonians an opportunity to present more music, the, the soca artists, the chutney artists. Chutney dance was a new element to match this year. And perhaps throughout the year, with it, once we have the financial resources, we can have some more of those activities to give the creative industries and the creative the artists an opportunity to produce more so come out on friday february the 23rd let's cooperate and celebrate republic 48. Sunil williams for info home and here's our final report the guyana police force is informing members of the public that in order to facilitate activities relating to the marshall money float parade 2018 the following intersections will be closed to vehicular traffic from six hours until the end of the day's activities camp street and thomas lands albert street and wolfart avenue sandy bab and jb singh 
The following streets will be closed to Plus Engine Road. They are Sandy Bab, Bar Street, Dowding Station Street, Lamaha Street, Wolford Avenue and J.B. Singh. In Queenstown, Anaira and Laluni Street will be closed to Irving Streets. The following roads will also be closed to facilitate the float parade. Crown, Almond and Foreshaw Streets will be closed to Irving Street, Church Street, North Regent Street, South Brickdam, Homestretch Avenue, Hadfield, Mandel Avenue will be closed to Vlissingen Road. Any inconvenience caused is regretted. Please note that you can check out Stag Stage 6 also on at the National Park tonight and the traditional flag raising ceremony at Durban Park with fireworks, military and cultural displays. In the morning from 9 a.m. it's the Mashramani Float Parade. This is from Thomas Lands along Vlasingen Road and into Durban Park. Check our website or Facebook page for more details as we bring you updates on Republic Day and Mashramani activities. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.